Jenna Talakova joins me in Studio Q. Hello to you. Hello to you. Nice Thanks to have for you here. Me. I mean, it's been quite a whirlwind couple of years for you. It, it couldn't have been <laughs> easy going through such a media firestorm back in 2012. Tell me why you why you would want to put your life fully on display in this new series. Well, I think me exposing my life will help a lot of younger women going through, you know, situations like I have. But not just transgendered or people of the LGBT community, but my show will show like real life situations and what I what I go through with discrimination and, you know, letdowns. And I think a lot of people can really relate to that. So um, I hope people enjoy the Was show. Was the reality series your idea? Uh, it was my producer, Carrie Mudd. She heard my story. Two days later, she drove out. I drove out. <laughs> but she came out to Vancouver, had dinner with me and my agent. And, you know, her vision really aligned with my personality. And we had a connection. And here I am. And was there ever a moment where you said, I've, I've been through so much with this in the media already. I don't know if I want to be involved in a reality TV show that further continues the conversation. Honestly, I was, my agent kept sending me down to LA to meet with a lot of networks and they were pitching like numerous kind of shows and their visions for, for me. And it just did not align with my personality at all. It was nothing that I stand for. And, um, and it wasn't Canadian owned. So as soon as Carrie approached me and, you know, you meet people for a reason and, you know, it, her vision aligned with mine. What's the kind of thing you turned down? <laughs> like bachelor-esque kind of shows, stuff right. where I'm dating a bunch of guys or else, you know, just like kind of train wreck kind of shows. Right. Uh, you know, like I do yoga, I study nutrition as a hobby. I not into that kind of style. This Brave New Girls stars you, your cousin Angela, yeah, who's Diana. quite a personality, and Diana. <laughs> uh, what, 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 story do you, what story did you want to tell with this, this show, Jen? Well, I, I can just hope that people can learn to accept people for who they are. You know, not even if you're transgendered or in the LGBT community, but just accept people who are different. And and I hope they realize that I'm just an average girl. And I say we're all into this together. We're all dealing with the same kind of problems. So, In the beginning of that first episode, which I watched, you open up about your past. <laughs> you say you dreamed of being a model and actress, quote, mm -hmm. since you were a little boy. Uh, when did you first know you were actually a girl or, or a woman? Um, it's Honestly, since I was conscious, but I shied away from it, and I was scared more of what my family and friends and my brothers would think, and I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to make it uncomfortable for my parents. So that's why I started my transition at fourteen, but I probably could have started at, you know, grade two or one, or kindergarten or something. Like How did that. you find the strength at, at the age of fourteen? I just had enough. Actually, I went on a on a trip with my my dear uncle Thomas, and we went to a, a Sundance. It's kind of like a native tradition in Merritt. And um, I was with my cousins, and usually when I go see groups of boys or anything like that, I'd get I'd get kind of phobias because I knew they would try to like help me, or I'd be scared to tell them I was a boy because people always assumed I was a girl, even as a little boy. And so my cousin was just like, why don't you just say you're a girl? And I always kind of, I didn't know if I was gay or not because like it, I felt like such a girl. I was attracted to everything feminine and it just clicked. When she said that word, I was like, that's it. Yeah. I want, I am a girl. I want to go through this. And so when I came back from that trip, I had like a spiritual awakening at 14 and, um, I got brave, and I just went through the transition. As I mentioned, in, uh, fast, fast forward to 2012, and you, t <laughs> and you take on Miss, Miss Universe uh, head Donald Trump for mm -hmm. the right to compete in the Miss Universe Canada pageant, and you won. Uh, you hired high-profile American women's rights attorney Gloria Alred to help you. Tell me why it was important to fight back. Was what, a, what was happening at that moment? Well, the thing is, as soon as I was disqualified, I kind of gave up on everything, and then... Thankfully, a lot of people talked me into, like, you can become an activist. You can, 
you can, you know, fight for your right to compete. And the thing is, I was training for like a year and I was devastated when I was disqualified. So I made a game plan and I actually hired a lawyer from Vancouver to take on the organization in Canada. And then I reached out to Gloria to file a lawsuit against the U.S. organization. You were sort of thrust into the role of being an activist then. Yeah. I never had visions of that. You didn't. You you never self-identified as an activist before. You know, I didn't even have any transgendered friends growing up or anything. I, you know, all my friends were girls and I just went through high school that way. And um, thankfully, through this whole thing, I got more into the LGBT community and I met a lot of transgendered women and I realized that my story really helped them. And, um, you know, I wouldn't call myself, like, a huge activist. You know, there's, uh, I have, like, um, my friend who's a huge inspiration to me. Her name's Laverne Cox, and she is 100% into all the activism when it comes to injustice against transgendered mm-hmm. women. So I'm trying to do my best, and I hope this show can uh, shine light on it all and help people be more open to um no, people that are different or transgendered women. Well, you didn't win the pageant, but you did place in the top 12. Uh, yeah. and, and you got a lot of media attention, which certainly raised your public profile. Still, in this in this first episode of Brave New Girls, uh, Jenna, it, it, it reveals some ambivalence you have about being defined as a transgender model. Tell me about that. Do, do you sometimes... I mean, I guess, do you see your transgender identity as a hindrance in your public life? You know, it works to my favor. And I think through the show and um, through all of this limelight, it's it's made me more comfortable with who I am. And maybe that was God's way of um, helping me accept myself even more so. Because I've worked so hard in transforming myself that I've, you know, I at one point I was, you know, just not open it open about it but now I'm very open about it and I I love telling my story to people as long as they approach me in a respectful manner and they want to talk about it with um, integrity then I'm 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 an open book but there's a point when your agent calls your your being transgender your calling card and it feels it feels a little strange to hear I mean this is who you are how do you feel about it being called your calling card calling card I mean he was it's just his way of saying you know um, learn to use what you were given and you know use what you think you're is a hindrance to you and use it in a positive manner because it is helping me and it and it made me realize that it, it This is my path, and I know I'm a woman. I know deep down in my soul I was born that way. But um, I had to go through transgendered medical procedures, and that's okay. Now that you've become something of an icon for transgender people, do you feel a responsibility? Do you... you do. You're nodding. I do. Tell I, me about that. I believe like I didn't have the right kind of role models growing up, and it led me down a path that um, I needed to go through. And I, especially for in a transgendered aspect, I had no role models that were transgendered, and um, I I want to be that kind of girl. So I even to my family, I try to inspire them all the time, living a healthy lifestyle, achieving goals, and working hard towards everything in my life. So I I deserve it. It's my purpose to be a role model. Do you sense. ever just wake up and just want to be Jenna rather than Jenna the activist? The, the, oh, the, yeah, the, I'm the, always the role just model? Jenna. Oh, you're always just Jenna. I'm just, I am always <laughs> doing my thing. Like I travel and I do my thing. But I mean little things that I do and give my time to help help people and and. I'm okay with that. Well, you were the Grand Marshal at the Vancouver Pride Parade. Oh, that's lovely. You've addressed women's and First Nations groups in BC. What, what, what issues are closest to your heart right now? Oh, to be honest, I I have to go back to school on January 20th. Um, so finishing my holistic nutrition program and is something I would be working on this year. I want to pull I want to sign to a great modeling agency. I think I'm confident now and I want to take that take that up a level and um I have aspirations about Sports Illustrated. I mean, see there I'm not being a role model. I'm just doing my kind of thing. Traveling and you know, um Well, maybe that is 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 maybe that's part of being the role model. Maybe. Is it? Um 
just putting myself out there. Do you, think, do you feel like Sports Illustrated is, is separate from being a role model? You, you just separated it there. I mean, okay, maybe wrong choice of words, but um, I would like to compete. I would like to pose for Sports Illustrated. It's always been one of my dreams and goals. Um, I don't know if that's being a role model, though. <laughs> I, really do you, don't know. I understand you're currently urging the World Health Organization to change its classification of transsexualism <laughs> as a mental disorder. Oh, you did your research. <laughs> yes. Tell me about that. Uh, well, I. Um, well, basically, they, in a way, it helps a lot of women because, say, say you said that, yeah, you needed money for education, and a lot of transgendered women are living in poverty, and so they can, the doctors will say, classify transgenderism as a mental illness, thus getting them you know, funding for schools and whatnot. So it can work in your favor, especially for, um, you know, poor countries. And um, But, you but I think to. they're taking it out of context in a way as well. And I think it's not a mental illness at all, and I think they have to rewrite it. And, you know, it was something that I... It actually happened to me before when I was studying, and... Um, someone mentioned it and I just I thought it was so absurd and I mean it can help a lot of women and it does but I really think it's not a mental illness it's it's, it's deep down in my as a person that is, has went through it it's something that you just are born with mm. there's there's an increasing number of transgender people and stories in the mainstream media and in everyday life there's still clearly a learning curve for many. Uh, mm-hmm. During the Miss Universe controversy, you spoke, you spoke to Barbara Walters. That was who, great. She called you a knockout, but she also inspi- inquired about personal details of your anatomy. And that's okay. Is that okay? I mean, as long... She was a little blunt about it, but it's Barbara Walters. And I mean, the, the general audience is interested in that. Like, did I go through the surgery? How was it? How does it look? And I mean, as long as if it's, you know, done with respect, I'm okay with answering these questions. But I think we're missing the point. And there's a, there should be more limelight towards, you know, um, all these hate crimes going on with women, with transgendered women in the U.S., around the world. And... I mean, people should care a little more about that than. Well, your friend what's Laverne Cox pants. from uh, Orange Is the New Black was was on with Katie Couric, mm-hmm. and a similar similar question line came up. Uh, you're shaking your head. So th- she's amazing. I love Laverne Cox. Right. Uh, how do you feel about the media's approach in gen- in general to trying to understand issues and experiences relating to transgender people? Um, I I don't think they're wrong with asking these questions i mean it's fair like to ask about people are interested in those kind of things but i think there needs to be a fine balance between um the real issues that we deal with with discrimination and um health care and whatnot but um when it comes to the anatomy of our bodies and what we do i mean if it will you know educate I mean, people don't, um, they, if they don't understand something, they're afraid of it. And so by telling, telling my story and, and Laverne and Carmen, you know, getting out there and just Carmen being Carrera, in the, yep. yeah, being in the limelight and telling people their stories, we're making it more socially accepted. So. Well, the Miss Universe episode defined you in the public eye, uh, but you are, you're, you're a young woman. You're still evolving. How, how do you think in, in the future you'll walk that line between being an individual and being a public figure serving a cause? I mean, can you foresee a day when your trans identity will just be one aspect of how the public sees you? I definitely can see a day like that. And I will, I will always, you know, this will always follow me, I think, and I'm okay with that. I mean, it's part of my history. It's part of what I've been through. It helped a lot. And um, I'm always going to be me, and I'm always, you know, I'm only 25, and I'm still finding myself in a lot of ways, and I'm still working towards many goals. So um, 
you know, I, I look at it all in a positive manner. Tell me about those goals. Uh, things seem to be going well for you these days. You've got this TV series, Brave New Girls. You've got a fashion spread in the January issue of Elle Canada. Uh, do you have specific goals in terms of what, do you, want, what you want to accomplish yeah, career-wise? Oh, career-wise, yes. Um, well, like I told you, everything with modeling I would love to do. Actually, it's funny, Karen Carrera was, talk, was trying to get into the Victoria's Secret show because one of the shows that I was really interested in doing and was pitched was I was going to train as an angel, train to, to and walk in the show. And um, although Victoria's Secret said no to the show, they said I could uh, go for the audition and see how I do. So... Um, that would be something I would love to do one day. Uh, just travel, and hopefully this show's a success. Um, probably write a beauty guidebook because I have a nutrition nutrition background, and I'm really into that and health. And many women ask me about my beauty regimes, what I do, how I eat. And, I mean, if I could write a beauty guidebook, that would be cute. Well, I think that's <laughs> entirely possible for you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for doing this today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.